hand if you want to be something. Okay, good. If you didn't raise your hand, well, we have a lovely guidance counselor down the hall. <laughs> now raise your hand if you want to go into a competitive profession. Yeah, well, me too. My dad is an entrepreneur, and my mom is on the nutritionist track, so that should obviously mean I'm a STEM baby, right? Well, I wouldn't say that's exactly true. Or true at all. I want to be a writer. More specifically, a dramatic writer, meaning that I would write scripts for things like movies and plays. College programs for dramatic writing are very exclusive and small, so it's good to rack up a portfolio of awards so you can look flashy on a college application. With this in mind, I decided to participate in a regional playwriting competition that was coming up. I had written a lot of scenes before, but never an actual one-act play, which, if you think about it, is pretty dangerous. How could you want to be a writer without having a script under your belt? To make things worse, I found out about the competition late, so I only had three days to come up with an idea, write the script, and edit it. It may not seem like a lot, but without a class of peers to help you come up with an idea, I had a lot on my shoulders. But hey, let me talk about my favorite class of sophomore year. Acting. Now, my love of writing came from my love of acting, so I loved the class with all my heart. The teacher who led the class was also my advisor, so we were very close. As for the class, we were a handful. And in that handful, there was a girl who almost always wore green rubber rain boots to school. Random, I know, but they were like the brightest, squeakiest things ever, so I could never take my eyes off of them. One day, I was in class, and I was staring at the boots, and decided to look up and realize that there was an owner to them, and she recommended a show to me. Now, I wouldn't assume that you guys would know this show. I heard it's pretty popular. It's called Stranger Things. Now, my nerdy self fell in love with the show, and when you recommend a show to me that I like, or give me food, you stay in my mind and my heart. <laughs> so, that night, I was sitting in my room, staring at a blank computer, coming up with literally the worst ideas for plays I have ever seen in my life. A girl who throws a tea party with her stuffed animals, and they end up killing her real friends. <laughs> a person with a bow tie. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I spent the whole night on those ideas. It was the night before submissions were due, and I was very close to giving up. Maybe writing wasn't for me. I mean, obviously, since I couldn't think of anything. But then something started nagging at me, something that had been nagging at me for a while. My teacher and advisor just announced that he was going to retire that year. He was going to California. I wish I was in California instead of school. I was jealous of him. Green is the color of envy, the boot. <laughs> Holy crap. I busted out a script in three hours. The boots, the girl, my teacher, his retirement, it all came together. I ended up being the youngest of five winners at that regional theater competition, got a Governors of the Arts Award, and went on to win many more, all because of that sad thought of my teacher's retirement and those bright boots constantly distracting me from my work. Now, that's how I solidified my want to be a writer. But how can we explain what just happened in that story? In order to do that, we have to lay down two platform questions. What is distraction and what is creativity? Now, distraction is anything that prevents someone from giving their full attention to something else. You can be distracted by many things, someone shaking their leg, a piece of fuzz in the air that you desperately want to catch but you don't want to look like a crazy person, or my personal favorite, your sister singing All Star by Smash Mouth on karaoke so loud that you have hallucinations of Shrek during your SAT the next day. <laughs> Basically, distractions are annoying but they can also be annoying saviors, and that's where creativity comes in. Now, what's creativity? We all know creativity is that dead goldfish poem that won the Scholastic Gold Key, or that science project that won best in show in the fifth grade, but you knew their parents made it. <laughs> to put creativity in a more positive light, it's the use of imagination or original ideas, especially in the production of artistic work. Now, in schools these days, creativity is slowly being condensed into elective classes. With a culture that's all about getting into college, standardized testing has become a priority. And in order to do standardized testing, you're taught to use convergent thinking. Now, convergent thinking is very linear. 
like multiple choice answers on a test. You have to solve a specific problem in a specific way with a specific set of facts, like arithmetic. You don't solve 2 plus 2 by multiplying the amount of apples that hit Sir Isaac Newton's head by the amount of masks at the 2013 Mardi Gras. Not only would that be very complicated and near impossible, it would also be very, very wrong. Your ideas being all over the place is more divergent thinking. Divergent thinking is where you basically let your brain run wild and find ideas in its smoky trail. It's creative, open-ended thinking aimed at generating fresh views. So, divergent thinking can often be explained through things called semantic networks. Semantic networks, also known as frame networks, are the web of connections that stem off of an original point. For example, while preparing for this talk, I asked my brother for two totally different words. After waiting for a response that never came, along with a self-evaluation of why I have no power as the oldest sibling, <laughs> I enforced my authority upon my sister asking for two totally different words. She chose quiche. Then she couldn't think of anything else, so I asked my dad for his favorite actor. He chose Eddie Murphy. My job was to connect the two. I came up with this. Now, you may be thinking, well, you're trying to get from point A to point B. Isn't that convergent thinking? Well, in some ways, you're right. But this is a very simple, one-track version of divergent thinking. If I had kept all of the dead-end thoughts that sprung off of even some of these ideas, my network would look something like this. So, we start off with quiche, which is made from eggs, which is a classic breakfast food, which reminded me of the classic movie, The Breakfast Club, which stars Molly Ringwald who was also in the movie Sixteen Candles, which sounds a lot like the mediocre Disney Channel original movie Sixteen Wishes, which stars Debbie Ryan, who played Bailey in the show Sweet Life on Deck, which is the mediocre spin-off of the show Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. I think you could start seeing a theme here. So one of their main characters, Maddie, is played by Ashley Tisdale, who played the iconic Sharpay in the iconic movie High School Musical which involve a scene where Troy climbs a tree on the side of Gabriella's house to get to her. It's very cute. <laughs> now, that scene and the tree coming up from the house reminded me of a certain stump house, which is owned by Shrek, whose best friend is Donkey, played by the one and only Eddie Murphy. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Now that was pretty weird, and I know, but that's how my movie reference trained brain filters through thoughts in order to get to an idea. So that leads down to our main question. How does distraction fuel creativity? As I just explained, distraction comes from a lack of attention or leaky sensory gathering, meaning that your thoughts are out of focus. This then leads to divergent thinking, which gets you generating an idea by stemming off of a certain point. That certain point being the distraction. The idea is the end result of this divergent creative process. And that's basically it. To break it down further, we have to dive into Freudian territory. Now, Sigmund Freud was an Austrian neurologist born in the 1800s. While his more notable works include subjects that I <clears throat> can't talk about in a school setting, his studies on the subconscious were very interesting, with him saying that the subconscious deeply influences the conscious mind. Now, what does this mean? What this means is that the greater the distraction, the stronger the impact it has on your subconscious, hence it returning later in a dream or recurring thought. For example, in the context of the play that I wrote, my teacher's retirement agitated me, which prevented me from thinking of ideas. When I took a step back, I realized that I literally had to be a human windshield wiper and write away all of the distraction that was clouding my brain. Of course, I could have used the other ideas that I came up with by myself, but not only would the end result for them be disastrous, I wasn't as driven with emotion to write them as much as what I was feeling right then and there. That my teacher's retirement ruined my life, and that the Boots Girl recommending that show to me kind of saved it. <laughs> so, all in all, distraction isn't actually distraction. It's inspiration. This inspiration, when put in the right direction, 
will give you the fuel to be creative. Now, here's my warning. Don't use this talk as an excuse to sleep through class and go on dangerous adventures because you're trying to get creative. That's not what I'm aiming for with this. Distraction is an interruption that comes naturally. It's an environmental occurrence. You can't force yourself to become distracted because then that becomes a distraction in upon itself and a dangerous one at that because you can't get any ideas from it. You have to harness a distraction like it's a pony. I'm dead serious. You have to take it by the reins, not let it run all over the place, and then you can train it to make you look good. Emphasizing my previous point, you can't go attack a wild, ravenous pony to try to make yourself look good because then it will run you over and you'll die. <laughs> so I took a distraction and I put it in the right direction, fueling my emotions and putting myself in a creative zone. But that's not always going to happen. If you're in a situation like me, where you constantly need ideas for things like competitions, assignments, or even just for fun, then I would recommend keeping a list or a journal and writing down all of the random things that pop into your head throughout the day. As a student who has trouble focusing, I noticed that a lot of teachers would say things like snap out of it and pay attention, which is justified, but they did it without knowing that that would make it even harder for me to concentrate. If one teacher would have told me, hey, what you just said was like really weird, but why don't you write it down and do something with it later, then I would have discovered this creative outlet that was hiding right in front of my face way earlier. Believe me, writing is hard, but this method creates a constant revenue of ideas. But hey, if nothing in this talk inspired you at all and you just came here desperately looking for a way to get creative, then I deeply, deeply suggest getting a pair of these. <laughs> Thank you.